is Ian Milton. Okay. Um, I'm going to start my contribution with a quote from a Tory MP, which might be an odd way to start, but I think it's uh, very indicative of uh, what's taking place from the Tory party, because they said in, in an interview with a newspaper, uh, I don't want to stab the Prime Minister in the back, I want to stab him in the front so I can see the expression on his face. <laughs> You'd have to twist the knife though, because we want it back for Osborne. All we have to do is catch the Prime Minister with a live boy or a dead girl, and we are away. And frankly, that's sort of horrifying to hear about, but that shows a depth that the Tory parties are tearing themselves apart, are prepared to undermine each other. That and the fact you've got, for example, John Major, the former Prime Minister, calling Boris Johnson a jester and, and so on. This depth of splits that are going on, I think is, uh, you know, I think is one of the key features of this referendum that we have to take note of and think about what's coming forward from that because only 24% of the electorate voted for the Tories at the, uh, at the uh, uh, last gen general election. They only have a majority of 12 uh, MPs and you can see how they've already, even without the sort of, uh, you know, the mass resistance a lot of us would like to see, have been forced into making U-turns, not least of which, uh, you know, on the thing that affected uh, members of my union, us though, on Sunday trading where the government lost the vote in the House of Commons but they've been defeated in the House of Lords, they've just dro they've dropped stuff, they've done with academies that are sort of a pretend to have a U-turn because of pressure uh, and that, but are coming back for it. But, um, you know, the Tories really are beset by crisis on all fronts. When you look around, you know, in or out of the EU, there's a looming economic crisis uh, 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 coming. Unemployment is rising again. Wages have been stagnant for eight years uh, in Britain. You've got the crisis in the steel industry, the crisis of the oil refineries, the collapse of BHS and Austin Reid in the last few uh, uh, weeks, the scandal of low pay and zero hour, hour contracts, which is again getting aired with Sports Direct being uh, 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 being inquired into in Parliament, the housing crisis, and you know the list goes on. And that, and I think that the EU referendum might be the thing that working class people take as a stick to beat the government with, just like the independence referendum was used in in uh, uh, Scotland. Cameron could fall as a result of this referendum. I think now, even if. The, the vote is a Remain vote. If it's still tight, I think that could be uh, uh, the conclusion of it. You know, Tory MPs have been describing Cameron as toast if he, you know, if he doesn't win a big majority for uh, uh, remaining in. So I think we could, I think there's a potential to see a fresh general election before the end of the year as a result of the Tory party not being able to uh, uh, find a stable uh, working majority in Parliament such as a debt for these uh, uh, splits. And given that, it's a shame that the majority of the leaders of the labour and trade union movement, with a few honourable exceptions, some of whom are on the uh, 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 platform with us tonight, uh, have, have not really used this, you know, taken this opportunity. In fact, you could say that some of them are offering Cameron uh, a, a lifeline. Um, you know, I mean, I don't have to say much about the likes of Sadiq Khan or Harriet Harman or even Natalie Bennett of the Greens who've been sharing platforms uh, with Cameron. Obviously, that's not something we're, you know, prepared to do. Uh, with their, their equivalents in on the on the exit side, and it's been correct for John McDonnell, for example, to criticise them for being on platform. But it's a big mistake, really, of Jeremy Corbyn to allow himself to be corralled by right wingers in the Labour Party, including Hillary Benn, who put it to him only a few days after he was elected about what position he'd take to be corralled into uh, uh, supporting uh, a Remain. Because I think we could, you know, it's potential to see the same effect we saw in Scotland where Labour, Labour in Scotland were punished for being seen to line up with the Tories on the same side of the campaign, whilst many workers were on the opposite uh, uh, side of that uh, referendum. At a time when the Tories can be defeated, and Corbyn could find himself uh, a Prime Minister, and I think most of us on the platform would, you know, would see that as a positive uh, 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 development, Labour instead trying to uh, save Cameron's neck. Now, people in the left remain camp say that this is a fantasy, but Let's be honest, both Labour and the Tories are preparing for a general election at the moment. Uh, you know, there was a report, I think, in The Guardian a few weeks ago, or it might have been The Mirror, that said uh, uh, that would be the case. Some of these lefts in the Remain campaign say that uh, a Leave victory would be a vote for the right. And it's true that at the top of these, uh, both the official campaigns, you've got millionaire reps of the rich and big business. You've had Tony Blair coming out of the woodwork to join Cameron on the Remain trail. You've got Boris Johnson and uh, uh, Farage on the, on the other side. Uh, you know, and these these people at the moment are trying to play on people's fear around the NHS, around the lack of jobs and homes and services. Uh, 
and that you know i mean it's somewhat hip hypocritical for nigel farage the man who was involved in organizing a campaign for more a demonstration for more austerity at the same time the tuc were campaigning and had seven hundred thousand people on the streets of london campaigning against austerity one month after he organized a demonstration of a thousand people uh, you know, in London, a national demonstration of a thousand people organised by UKIP for more austerity uh, uh, and that. It's, it's scandalous that he's trying to uh, 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 gain from this. And you can understand the feelings of some young people, I think, who are opposed to racism, who see these right-wing horrors in the media and don't want to be seen, you know, don't want to uh, feel as if they're on the same side uh, 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 of uh, Farage. But I think for anybody who's worried about those, uh, you know, about increasing racism, you just have to look at what the EU's doing to the refugees and that, letting them drown in the Mediterranean, or if they get to uh, Europe, shipping them back to Turkey. These are people who are fleeing the, the bombs of the US and Britain and other countries that have been bombing places like Libya, Syria uh, and Iraq. And saying that is no defence of the regimes that exist there, but it's, uh, you know, like what is the consequence of, uh, of, of our government's policies? And, that, and that's why we're, I would say, we're having an independent campaign. We want to try and make sure the working class voice isn't buried like the mainstream media uh, are doing, because otherwise we let uh, uh, UKIP and others step into the void. Now, I think it's also true to say that it's a victory for the right if Cameron wins. Uh, and, uh, and that. I don't think Boris Johnson and Michael Gove are that different, for example, they've been in government with Cameron carrying out all these policies. And, you know, like we're talking, you know, there's talk about a bonfire of rights if there's a exit vote, but... Did the EU stop the trade union bill coming in? Is the EU stopping the housing bill, which is going to get rid of, uh, 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 trying to end social housing? Is it stopping privatisation of the NHS? The answer is no. It's ridiculous to suggest that. I think that good, you know, good laws will disappear automatically on a Brexit uh, vote. A lot of the laws and legislation that a lot of trade unions are now saying that the EU introduced were actually brought in by struggles of workers. Uh, for example, Dagenham, Ford Machinists, you know, fighting for equal pay and so on, uh, uh, and that. And really, what you know, what the best defence of those is not the EU, but it's workers organising together collectively in struggle uh, to defend that. And I think it shows that some trade union leaders have lost the will to fight and instead rely on a boss's institution like the EU for kind of crumbs off the table. It's a massive irony that the TUC leadership, who's failed to organise a national demonstration, let alone uh, any sort of industrial action campaign against these vicious anti-trade union laws, is now lining up with Cameron saying he's going to be defender of workers' rights. It's, you know, it's beyond a joke. So we want to say, uh, I think, really, that it shouldn't be a question of the trade unions and the working class passively choosing between two bad sides in a referendum of the official campaigns. You know, we shouldn't just be denouncing their campaigns. We should be trying to put, take the lead and put our own view forward of what's necessary uh, uh, for things. Because people are searching around looking for a lead. Y you've had a whole uh, gamut of housing campaigns in London trying to deal with the campaigns there. And there's been campaigns up here, including ones that Tusk uh, in Leeds has initiated around private sector uh, housing. You've had a mini strike wave taking place uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, Ian's members are on strike uh, in, uh, in Sheffield and Newport. Uh, uh, pe you know, pe mem members of the union, Peter's a member, are on strike on southern trains uh, as well. You've got uh, the supreme irony of the uh, uh, government office that's supposed to be implementing this northern powerhouse of the government, uh, where they're trying to close it and send it to London, uh, you know, which is just uh, beggar's belief. But you've had, in the last few weeks, you know, you've had the UCU on strike, you've had the junior doctors uh, before them, you've, had, you've got the teachers balloting for strike action. And I think, of course, we can take on Cameron or Boris Johnson or Michael Gove and win, but it requires, I think, determination, coordination of struggles, but it would be massively speeded up if there was a lead given from the tops of our movement rather than uh, coming in behind uh, uh, Cameron. Fundamentally, the EU is a boss's club. It's a cabal of capitalist governments that's enforcing austerity across Europe. Just look at kind of Ireland where they're trying to bring back the water charges that Irish people voted against in the election in France where they're lining up behind the government to introduce anti-workers law and of course Greece where they're grinding Greece into, uh, into uh, uh, poverty. The EU enshrines austerity and privatisation. Now I don't think that means fighting, uh, uh, you know, that, that workers can't struggle and campaign to overthrow that. After all, that's what you know, was possible in Greece after the referendum where people rejected the EU austerity. Unfortunately, the Cyprus government capitulated to it. What I think it does is it creates another barrier that we have to try, we have to try and overcome. And in that context, I'd rather not have that barrier to our struggles 
uh, uh, and campaigns and be able to, you know, have one less obstacle in the way. But we have to fight uh, for decent jobs and workers' rights for all. We have to fight for jobs and homes. We have to end privatisation, nationalise the steel industry, nationalise rail, fight for a government of the 99% that takes the wealth off the 1%. Bringing in the banks and other key sets of the economy into democratic control so we can run it in the interests of ordinary people and not the millionaires. We are internationalists, but we're the internationalists of the working class for solidarity and struggle together for decent wages <coughs> and jobs for all. Not the internationalism of bosses, which is interested in profits for a few at the top. So please, uh, don't just, you know, vote. Uh, uh, to leave in this referendum, but don't just do that. Get involved in struggle because together, it's only together, fighting together, we can win the real games that we want to see.